All right, let's take a look at the payroll clocking and job clocking setup in Black Pearl and where it originates from. So we'll head over into this account. It's a sandbox account. And it's important to know that before you set up your payroll clocking and job clocking, that that setup originates from users in your system settings. In particular, time clocking staff, technicians. But before we get into that, let's take a little side note to say licensed technicians do not require a login. Now, further to that, they require using a terminal that has already been logged in by a licensed user. So as an example here, this account has set up a service group. Now, typically what would happen is this licensed user would be assigned into this group and this licensed user would log into Black Pearl and then the time clocking staff, the technicians, would be using that terminal. So no, they didn't log into Black Pearl themselves, they don't have the credentials, but they do need to be using a logged in terminal. And what would happen is you would have a member assigned to it and now this particular group, there isn't one, so that licensed user would be logged in and that licensed user would only have the permissions that those technicians would be required to have for time clocking. So it would be up to you to decide how much permissions you'd want granted under your service login, which is allowing access for all of your time clocking staff. So let's go back now to where we were to looking at where does job clocking and time payroll clocking originate from? And it originates from users. So depending on your account, uh, this will depend on how much licensed users you have in your account, as well as what the limits on time clocking staff are in your account. But this is where you would set up time clocking staff as technicians yourself. So if you have a new technician that you'd like to add, um, let's call this one Harold Smith. Now at this stage, if it's a technician that's going to be job clocking and payroll clocking, yes, you do want them to be a technician. You can go ahead and add them. So now there will be more items to go through here. Here's their role. Here's their labor cost per hour. And here is what we noticed before, the working days. So now this is where we went back to our scheduler and we can see that based on working days, that's how many hours are available in the scheduler. So if Harold Smith only works on Thursdays and Fridays, now there's going to be less time available in your scheduler for these days and more available on these days. Now it's also important to know that if there's a leave or exception, this is where you can always come back and log leaves or exceptions. The other item to note here is the labor cost per hour. Now the default in Black Pearl when it comes to accounting and the cost of goods sold with technician costing actually pulls from the labor code and the labor cost itself. We can set it up for you that your technician costing would be set up the second way. So in the second way, now your cost of goods sold on technician costing will be based on the technician's cost as well. Not as well, I should say, it's based only on the technician's cost and not on the labor code costs. So that's one thing to note if you're setting this up. And if you want this to report instead of your labor codes, uh, let us know and support and we'll get that all set up for you. So you can go ahead and add that technician. And once you have that technician in place, you'll now see there's Harold Smith and they are a technician. And that is how payroll clocking and job clocking gets set up in Black Pearl.